Hello, uh, I'm going to present this uh, Apple One emulator running forth. Uh, it's called Apple One GS, and uh, I should start here by uh, I can type here on the screen keyboard, uh, but I've set it to United States, my own here. It's normally Swedish, so this is Fox Four Eighty Three. And uh, I could uh, show here the words for us. So, so now it shows uh, all the uh, words in four. It is four eighty-three from the beginning. Uh, you can extend four with new words, and uh, you can also extend the compiler with new words like uh, if, a while, until, and things like that, if you want to. Um, so that makes fourth very flexible. Um, so we can uh, see here, prints out this. Uh, so my idea is to run this fourth in uh, the uh, Apple One clone uh, for FPGA, Field Programmable Gate Array, uh, because uh, it would be fun to run fourth there. And this fourth is uh, rather modern, it's fourth 83. Okay, so now it's shown all commands here. So we could just uh, test here if uh, it works. Like normal. So we take two plus three. Now we have to press. I work like that. Then you have to turn off shift. Then I uh, have dot. So it's five. So it worked there like what normally does. And uh, there are uh, some interactive courses on Fort online. Uh, I also have my own fourth that I've developed myself, but I should show here, I don't think uh, you will see this here, but you press the load button, and then uh, it pops up a window here that you might not see, but uh, that uh, window contains the hex code for, so you have to reset this uh, emulator first. Now we are in the Vosmon. It's the uh, monitor that uh, is written in 254 bytes. Uh, so it's very small, but it has a lot of commands by uh, Steve Wozniak. And uh, I should uh, see here if I can load this force here. So now I press uh, OK. Then it pastes in from the hex file that I in turn pasted into this uh, uh, box, a uh, pop up uh, window. Um, uh, it's because I use this WinG function to record this video that you can't see pop up windows because this is just for. Uh, recording videos of games. But here the hex code for this fourth that you programming language that you saw before is uh, pasted in here. And it takes a long time. So we could see uh, it seems it dropped here. That's because I run other programs here, that's why it's slower. It should normally run at one megahertz at 1000 kilohertz. Um, here is my own fourth. Uh, it's written in scratch, and here you can see some of the words at the end uh, from the word list. Um, and it uh, lacks some functions about strings and memory copy and things like that, but otherwise it's rather complete. It has these words that can. Uh, 
define new compiling words. So here is the demo that starts when you run it first time. And many of those examples are from the book Starting For, which you can read for free online. And you can try many of these, those examples in this fourth and even better in that other fourth here. Uh, it's still pasting there. And it goes rather slowly. Uh, it went by 1 MHz before, but uh, it has slowed down now because I run several other windows and also recording video. Uh, anyway, here is uh, Apple One, which this is trying to emulate. So, uh, what you bought was not this box, it was actually the car here. So, uh, here is an ad. And uh, it tells a lot about this computer and uh, how much you can expand it. So, you could have a, it's 8 kilobytes normally. RAM, but then you could uh, put in some other chips that were bigger. That uh, then you could add 32 kilobytes on the card, and uh, it could uh, save to cassettes. But then you had to buy an extra little board. Um, this is now emulated in FPGA, and that's. Uh, a very flexible digital circuit that you can uh, construct and connect together gates any way you like and then make any computer you want but uh, it's limited then to eight uh, kilo gates eight thousand gates uh, so uh, when you then uh, this has a processor 6502 and uh, there are old books about this uh, for free for children then 6502 and also you learn in this book Z80 uh, assembly and how to convert it to machine hex code by hand so you write first in text and then you convert these programs to Xcode because most uh, home computers in the 70s and 80s used uh, either 6502 or Z80 uh, so uh, here is uh, you learn most things here but it uses basic and uh, it's not so popular any longer. People use Python instead of basic now for those things. And also JavaScript, but uh, uh, Python can do more things with hardware, I think. Uh, uh, so I've made videos myself about this uh, uh, Apple One that runs in FPGO. But this example is something you couldn't do because you couldn't change colors on the uh, ordinary Apple One, but this has some extra registers to do that. This uh, clone. Uh, but uh, I made a playlist here about, about FPGA. I'm not. Uh, I studied uh, switching theory, which is a foundation for uh, FPGA. And we did some with those primitive FPGAs that I had in 93 when I studied this in 1993. And uh, so I did some uh, uh, of those constructions then. But now you use programming languages like Verilog and VHDL to. Uh, so it's still inputting there. Um, it might be that it stops when I switch out here. Could be like that. Um, 
but it takes a long time to paste it in. Um, in, in the er, then in this uh, other the real or the clone then, which is not an emulator, uh, then uh, I will use uh, a serial port to input the programs. And then I will use uh, an Arduino Leonardo uh, for that purpose. And, uh, because then I don't have to buy a special converter. Because uh, if you have a special program in Arduino Leonardo, you can convert between uh, USB and uh, TTL levels, but they are 3.3 volts, but I have a 3.3 volt Arduino Leonardo. Actually, it's Olimexino uh, 32U4, it's called. It's a clone of this Arduino Leonardo. Uh, yeah, so we see here. I think this stops when I move to another uh, tab. My goal was just to see when this starts. Um, because they have built in programs here, and then they have this false fault built in. But the built in version doesn't work, so therefore I have to paste it from a hex file in here. It's not uh, just the hex file, it's this language. Uh, was one language. Mm -hmm. You can see this video here, but this video is of course available in, in original too. So then you can see it better. Although a bit uh, faint now, and that's because uh, they have different fonts, and some fonts are just lines, but you don't see the lines here because my camera doesn't have that resolution, but you see it on the screen. And then they can be vertical lines too, and the dots, so it looks very computerized, like a dot matrix screen. can see if this goes faster. It runs a test program called FISBUS, which is very common to test computers with. So this force is a bit educational because you can see the stacks, return stacks and data stacks. another stage of execution and with a black background. Uh, so now here they are, oh, uh, we input a lot of zeros to the computer, but that might have been shortened. Maybe there was a command that you could say, I want to input uh, 400 zeros, for instance. Uh, so now it starts here, and uh, 
Now I can type here on the keyboard. Let's see. I don't know, do they have a break button here? Um, they have control here. Let's see if this works. That did work. Interesting. So now the speed here is coming up too. Let's see if I do that. Okay, that worked. Um, so I could uh, paste the code. It works. So I have some examples here. And maybe this uh, could work here. Oh. Let me see if this. And then I take this load. I clear that box. You maybe not see it, but. Uh, I paste in the fourth program there, and now uh, it types it in here. Now when I press, uh, I can press enter using the screen here, return. It should uh, print an F, like in four, and it does. So it uh, works very well. And it's interesting because you can write uh, uh, this computer, Apple One, came out in uh, 1976. So you can write uh, uh, modern programs uh, or programs that you've had all the time. And you can run on this old computer too, or this emulator of an old computer. So that's uh, good, I think. So here is this. As, uh, I'm still working here. Yes, so it costed there six hundred and sixty-six point sixty-six dollars, uh, and it was a bit so they they could make a profit and build Apple II. And then uh, they sold Apple II with profit for ten years, and then they started Macintosh. That's a rather strange uh, way of deleting things. So if I type something here now, for instance, uh, 33, then uh, I could say 11, or I say I type wrong there. And then I want to delete that. And then I use this uh, robot key, but that only adds one, but it deletes a four, this. And then I can uh, see here if deletion works. I know it, it was wrong again because I typed my Swedish keyboard here and I should have typed uh, let's see if it typed that key here. And then uh, this should be a 3 if we are correct here. Uh, delete didn't work here. That was. Uh, okay, so that uh, fourth doesn't handle delete. That's interesting. Uh, because it's almost impossible to write in code then because you could not do that correctly. But now this force has not been maintained since uh, uh, 2013, the 5th April. So uh, it's probably difficult to get them to fix this, but that's a bug here that uh, you can't delete the characters that you type wrong. See if this progressing here. 
it's still doing a fist pass. Fist pass finished now. Now it does some other examples here. Yeah, now it does pentagram here with the graph. Because this fourth has uh, some functions that uh, Scratch normally has. So now it's finished there. Okay. Uh, so that's, uh, I think that's almost makes it useless for educational uses for if it doesn't handle uh, rub out. Okay. But uh, Uh, there is this clear screen here that are interesting. So now it, it's nothing here. And uh, but if you type enter the uh, back, so it clears the screen, and uh, then you wait for a key for it to solve it again. And uh, then they have the reset button here, and that's very risky because that deletes the whole program. So. And it's the same thing with Apple II, they have a very risky reset button. But maybe this uh, doesn't clear the memory, I don't know. But uh, so we might be able to go back to it. So we could say, if we say 300 R as in run, then I will get forced back. So it hasn't really deleted anything in the memory. So we could uh, define a word, for instance, uh, program then. Uh, we could call it and Then uh, very difficult finding the keys here. Was, shift was active there. Now I can't back. So this was the. How could I save this now? Um, well, I could uh, have that plus there and then perhaps print something out. And, uh, but it's very difficult not to be able to delete the keys here. And then I could say, uh, for instance, uh, to to H W Hello World Four, because it adds four and then prints out the four. Uh, so that uh, now we have a stored command here. And then we see here if we do reset and then uh, do this 300 run we start a program with address 300 uh, return and then see if this is still here well I type wrong here uh, but I should say uh, Maybe it just disappeared because when 4 starts, maybe it uh, deletes memory. But we could probably jump to 4 to some other address and then uh, it disappeared when we start 4. But you could write programs that uh, can handle reset. So reset is only then starting the monitor, you could say. Okay. Uh, bye for now. A long video.